Hello and welcome back to Global Movie Recaps. Today we go through a Japanese sci-fi movie called, Tag. Tag might appear surreal and gorish on the surface, but when you look closer it has multitudes of depth. Look out for spoilers, enjoy. We'd like to request you to like and subscribe, it helps us a great deal. Plus we put out new videos every single day. The movie opens with two school buses traveling on a trip. It seems like a pleasant day with all the children merrily talking about gelato and other trivial things. We see the protagonist Mitsuko in her own world. She catches a feather, ponders for a while and continues noting down something in her diary. One of the friends asks Mitsuko to enjoy the trip instead of writing her poem. The other classmates try to snatch her book, but the pen falls. As Mitsuko goes down to get it, we see a powerful wind slice through the first bus. Then it continues to slice the second bus and all its travelers. Everyone is dead. Except for Mitsuko. The powerful wind seems like a strong blow of invisible katana, striking through objects, cutting them in half. Mitsuko survives this horror. And she notices the wind come back, and cut electric poles. Mitsuko gets outside the bus and starts running down the road. The wind follows her. She comes towards a group of four girls. She shouts asking them to get down but she is too late and they are all killed. We then see three cyclists being claimed by the same wind. Mitsuko runs away from the scene, heads into the woods. She comes across a stream, where she notices several amputated dead bodies of the schoolgirls. She washes in the stream and wears one of the dead person's clothes. Mitsuko starts moving again as she notices a group of schoolgirls insulated from the event. As Mitsuko joins the big group, she is greeted by a lot of friends. Her best friend, Aki joins her as well. Aki remarks that Mitsuko looks weird and wonders why her hair is wet. Perplexed by it all Mitsuko is still scared of the wind. Her friends find it extremely weird that she is acting this way. Aki comforts her and takes her to school. But when a wild wind blows, Mitsuko runs for her life. Aki hugs her and says everything is alright. In the corridors of the school, we see two teachers discussing their schedule and they come across Aki and Mitsuko. The teacher asks Mitsuko why she looks pale today and inquires if something is wrong with her. Aki steps in and says she is just having a bad day. Aki and Mitsuko then head to an empty classroom, where Mitsuko questions her if she has been in that school for all her life. Mitsuko then narrates her story. She says that it might have been a bad dream. In her dream, she saw a school bus full of girls murdered by the wind. She narrates the rest of the story. Aki dismisses it as a bad case of nightmare and amnesia. She opens the window and forces Mitsuko's hand out. She affirms to Midasuko that she has nothing to worry about. Mitsuko is relieved. Aki then reveals her plans to skip the class and takes Mitsuko along with her. On their way out they meet two of their friends Taiko and Sur. The girls make their way to the lake near the school. On their way to the woods, the girl makes fun of Mitsuko's dream and her amnesia. As they relax beside the lake, Aki says that Mitsuko is the most important person in her life and will always be there for her. Upon hearing Mitsuko's story, Sur, the surreal girl, says that the story might have happened in an alternative reality. She explains this by throwing a rock in the lake and creating a ripple. She asks Taiko to go take a look. Suddenly a crocodile appears out of nowhere, starts chomping on Taiko's lower body. Sur who had conjured this example, then explains that random crocodile biting and killing is also possible in an alternate reality, making Tycho nervous. The girls then find two pillows and start playing catch. Feathers fly around, Mitsuko enters a trance state, and notices blood on her hand. When she looks up, she sees a female couple holding hands. She then pops out of the trance, she then notices that the couple has disappeared. As they stop playing catch, Sur says that she wants to change reality, to which everyone laughs, but her easygoing carefree playful attitude stops. She says that her destiny is fixed, her fate is sealed. She illustrates this by throwing a feather, which she says will fall in its destined place, no matter what. Mitsuko asks if we they can change it at all? To which Sur claims that only, spontaneous actions can change reality. Acts like her randomly jumping into the water. Sur finally claims that life is surreal, and Mitsuko should not let it consume her. A sudden shift from playfulness to seriousness. Not able to digest the depth of philosophy, 
Aki suggests that they should head back to class. Back in the class, they are greeted by the same teacher who they ran away from. They sit and listen to her teaching, but Mitsuko notices a pillow that Aki claims to be hers. Mitsuko throws it towards Aki, and we see bullets fired across the classroom. The teacher shooting them with a submachine gun. She kills everyone. The teacher then comes to Mitsuko and says how dare she skips classes. As she points her gun towards Mitsuko, Sora appears and rescues her. Mitsuko, Taiko, and Sora make it to a lab to hide from the teachers. The other teacher then enters the lab and shoots one of the students. When Taiko unsuccessfully charges at her, the teacher then proceeds to shoot Taiko's head off. During this commotion Sora and Mitsuko make it towards the exit, but Sora is shot. As Sora is dying, she reminds Mitsuko that life is surreal and it should not let it beat her. Mitsuko makes it out of the classroom along with several other high schoolers. As the teachers blast them with grenades, machine guns and AK-47. Everyone asks Mitsuko to do something to help, as she is the only one who can beat the teachers. But then the wind from the first scene comes, and cuts all the girls into half. Mitsuko escapes from the wind and runs into a crowded area. She then gets into a police station and starts to explain, but the police can't seem to understand what she is trying to mention. The policewoman however recognizes her, and calls her by the name of Keiko. She asks her what is up with the school uniform? She then brings a mirror near her, to show how silly she looks. When Mitsuko peeks to look, she is transformed into a different person, Mitsuko has become Keiko. A different character altogether. Keiko is surprised to say the least. The policewoman then asks her if this is a prank on Keiko's wedding day, to which she is shell-shocked. She cannot process this surprising turn of events. The policewoman then takes Keiko to her wedding ceremony. A bunch of girls go crazy when they meet Keiko on her wedding day. They greet her with enthusiasm. She is guided into a room, where she sees, Aki. Keiko is relieved to see her. She asks for an explanation. But Aki suggests that they talk later. The girls put makeup on Keiko, and help her dress up. Aki then asks the girls to leave them alone for a while. She tries to convince Keiko that, this is her wedding day, and she has to get through it. Aki dresses her up. As a group of girls arrive, Aki demonstrates that these girls are nothing but drones. Greater than Aki kills them all in front of Keiko. They both smash one of the drones onto a table. Aki then gives a broken piece of glass to Keiko, and asks her to defend herself with it. Keiko then makes it to the wedding hall, where she is greeted by a lot of women. They are cheering for her initially, but then turn hostile, and start throwing trinkets at her. They insult her as they take her near the groom. When they open the casket, an ugly looking pig man appears. With his tongue out, the crowd cheers roaringly, and demands that the bride and groom kiss. But when Keiko is near the pig bride, she uses the broken bottle to slits the pig man's throat. As he falls into the crowd, Keiko goes into full action mode and starts kicking the other guests. We then see the school teachers return with their matrix clothes on. It's the bride, versus, Neo, at this point. Aki and Keiko fight them and manage to defeat them, and escape the scene, but matrix teachers hastily follow to hunt Keiko again. Aki distracts them and lets Keiko escape. Keiko starts running, and notices a woman in marathon clothes wave at her. As Keiko approaches her, she finds another mirror, and when she looks into it, she is changed again. This time she is wearing marathon runner clothes, Keiko has become Izumi. Izumi's friend asks her to hurry, as they have a race to finish, they all head towards the finish line, and are greeted by a large group of supporters cheering for Izumi. As per the commentary of the race, we get to know that Izumi is the favorite to win the race. We see a series of flashbacks of, Izumi finishing first in her school marathon and training with her friends. In the present race, we see Izumi get ahead of everyone, and see, Taiko, Sur, and Aki. They tell her to stay focused, as the Matrix teachers, and Pig Bride chase her. Aki asks Izumi to change tracks to get away from them. As Izumi runs away from the route, she goes further into a cave, where she sees a girl in a school uniform, drag her away. We then see a group of girls with their heads down. The school girls join the rest of them, and blatantly asks Izumi, why does she not die? She then threatens Izumi that if she is alive, then all these girls will die, and claims that Izumi is the reason they all die. Izumi is confessed. 
The psycho schoolgirl then proceeds to take a knife to carve Azumi, but then Aki arrives and helps her escape. Aki is basically Japanese Chuck Norris. She turns up the right time, every time to save the protagonist. Aki takes Izumi to a deeper part of the cave, and asks her to repeat certain things. She starts with the sentence, I, am, Mitsuko, as she forces Mitsuko to remember her past, Izumi repeats this several times. This makes Izumi transform back to Mitsuko. As Aki consoles Mitsuko, she tells her the reality of their world. She says that this is a fictional world, and someone has dragged them all into it. She then says that Mitsuko is the main character, and only she can stop the creators of this world. Aki then asks Mitsuko to help her exit this world, by destroying her, and she presents her hand. Aki wants Mitsuko to end her suffering. There seems to be two wires, a blue and a red one. Aki asks Mitsuko to pull them out as to help her escape. Mitsuko is reluctant, but Aki forces her to do it. We see Aki's body split and die. As Aki's body is split into two, a portal opens up. Mitsuko follows the red wire into the portal, and we see her enter a kitchen with several men cooking. This is the first time we see any male characters in the movie. Mitsuko makes it out of the kitchen. We figure it is a dystopian world filled with men, there are no women in sight. Mitsuko notices a banner outside the building with her face which says, Play tag in 3D. A young man approaches Mitsuko. He asks her if she remembers him. He also says he didn't expect her to make it this far. Mitsuko tries to recollect who the man is, but to no avail. The man then claims that she is in the future. All these facts make it hard to digest and Mitsuko faints. A feather falls on the ground and we see Mitsuko back in the same old cave. She walks along a trail in the cave. We see multiple clones of schoolgirls as if they were mannequin displays. This is when we realize they were all NPCs in the game. Mitsuko treads along this path and notices an old man playing the game as all three characters. Mitsuko, Keiko, and Azumi. He stops playing and turns to Mitsuko. He says that the girls died long back in the year 2034, but they collected their DNA samples, and entered it into a computer modeled game. He points at a glass enclosure with, Mitsuko, Keiko, Izumi, Aki, and the whole gang. The old man claims that the DNA was collected for their entertainment. During this conversation, we notice the same young man come in, and strip his pants. He asks Mitsuko to join. She is shocked. The old man standing behind her says that his 150 years dream will come true. What a simp. He asks Mitsuko to surrender to her destiny. Mitsuko is pushed towards the young man. She lies on the bed with him. She remembers. Sur saying that she has to do something unexpected to change her destiny. She then notices a feather fall on her blood droplet, which then turns red. The man makes an advance on her. She flips him and chokes him. She shouts that they should stop playing with her, as if she is a toy. She tears the pillow, and beats the man with it. All the white feathers turn red. Mitsuko then in a grand declaration that she is nobody's toy, grabs the old man's cane, breaks it, and stabs herself. In the alternate verse, we see, Mitsuko writing her poem in the bus. We see Keiko walking to the pedestal on her wedding day. But in an act of defiance, Mitsuko stabs herself with the pen. Keiko stab herself with the glass botch. We see Izumi dead in the marathon as well. Mitsuko on the snowy desert, a voice in the background says, It's over now. Mitsuko gets up and runs away. She is freed from the shackles of this world. The movie is surreal as it seems has several meanings varying from, feminist perspective of, breaking away from patriarchy, and lesbians coming out in Japan. Tell us what you interpreted, do let us know in the comments.